studying any subject, not just mathematics, can be difficult. It can be challenging. And when you're in college and you're taking upper level courses, it's hard to keep up, especially if you have a full course load. So in this video, we're gonna talk about things that you can do that will help you keep up with classes that are extremely difficult. This video is motivated by an email I received. The subject is how to keep up in fast and difficult classes. Hello, Math Sorcerer. My name is Jesse. I'm a big fan and wanted to say that you have helped in my classes a lot, especially differential equations, and that I love your videos and all the topics you cover and hope you keep it up. I am an electrical engineering major in my junior year. This semester, I am taking a couple difficult ECE classes, signals and systems, microcomputer systems, as well as intro to probability and stats and astronomy. Despite having a 14 hour semester rather than the usual 17 to 19, and this being my fourth year in college, I still find myself having trouble understanding the material in class and keeping up with the fast pace that my professor moves and I'm left not even knowing what questions to ask the professors to help me. My professor's office hours are also at very inconvenient times for my schedule. My question is, do you have any advice on how to keep up with fast paced classes and what to do if I am not understanding the 60 to 70% of the material you mentioned in your Beyond IQ video? Sincerely, Jesse. So first, let me just comment on the 60 to 70% uh, that Jesse is mentioning, because that's really cool um, that he's mentioning that, because that is pretty much on average what I understood in most of my classes in college. And when I say most of my classes, I mean like in a math class, you know, if, if I went to class and I sat down, I would understand roughly on average 60 to 70% of the material that was being taught. Sometimes much less, sometimes, you know, if the teacher I thought wasn't very good or the material just didn't work for me, I just didn't get it, it was much, much lower. And sometimes I would understand 80 to 90%. Those were sensational courses where I felt like the teacher was amazing and everything just clicked. But most of the time on average for me, it was 60 to 70%. So it sounds, Jesse, like you are not able to understand, you know, roughly 60 to 70 percent. And first, let me say that I'm sorry. Um, I've been there. It's hard. And I do have some advice. So you said that the office hours are not convenient. So let's just completely rule that out. So I'm just going to tell you things that I did in my classes that might help you. And if anyone else has tips for Jesse, leave a comment in the comment section below. So for me, the things I would do in hard classes and in graduate school, so when I finished and I went on to grad school, were that right after class, I would immediately sit down and I would basically go over all of my notes again, right, right after class, as soon as possible. Now, I know that's not always possible because you might have other classes after your class, you might have to drive home, you might have other responsibilities, but as soon as you can, the same day, the same day you want to go over all of your notes. So if you're taking, um, you know, a computer programming class, you want to make sure you go over everything you did in that class the day you had the class. Do it right after class as soon as possible. And I think this really helps reinforce things that you learned in class. What you'll find, and this is just my experience, and you're probably going to experience the same, is that a lot of the stuff in class didn't make sense. But a lot of times, some of the things that didn't make sense will make sense later. You'll be able to grasp a, a few things and you're still going to feel pretty lost in many cases, but it's better than not doing it. Obviously, I also recommend you write everything down. There's this big debate about whether you should write everything down or just pay attention and listen. I was always a person where I felt that I had to write everything down because I would try to pay attention and listen. But as I mentioned, and as you mentioned in your email, on average, I understood maybe 60 to 70%. So if I stood there and listened and didn't understand, and maybe only understood 60 to 70%, well, what does that mean? Well, that means when I leave class, if I don't write something down, I'm still going to be lost. So writing things down at least gave me hope 
uh, gave me the hope of actually figuring out what I didn't understand. So write everything down and then immediately after class, go over it again. So you mentioned office hours are out, so let's just keep that in mind. If you have the opportunity to somehow make it to office hours, that is huge, that is huge. Tutoring is probably also, I'm not gonna say it's not gonna work for you, but it's gonna be harder because in your situation, you are a fourth year student, you're taking advanced classes. Tutoring is typically available for lower level classes. So you're already, you, know, you, always, you almost have your degree, so you're taking the hardest classes. Another thing you can do is try to find people in your class who are really smart and are also decent people to be around and try to work with others. That makes a big difference, especially if you have someone in your class who's really good. For example, when I was in physics, uh, we had a, a lab component for the class and there was this guy, he was very strange. Um, sometimes he would talk to himself in class and I once heard him talking to himself in the bathroom. I don't think, you know, there was something wrong with him. And he was a nice guy and he was in my group and thanks to him, um, I did pretty well in the lab component in my physics class because he was pleasant to be around and he had like this knack for physics, like he really understood everything and he explained stuff to us and basically I had a very, very smart group member in my physics lab. So try to find, you know, people in your class who are extremely good and try to surround yourself with them, if at all possible. Sometimes people who are good don't want to study with you, but it can make a difference. And the friends that you can make now in college, you know, they might be your friends for a really long time. And it's a tough situation, the one you're in, because it's hard to get outside help for those classes. It really is. When you're in an advanced class, it's just hard to get help somewhere else. For example, if you were taking a partial differential equations class, it would be very, very hard to get help with that outside of class. It's just a little bit tougher. So those are some options I think that you have. Um, we have AI now, so you can ask AI for help. Um, you know, there's ChatGPT, and that could give you explanations, and that could be a really good resource uh, in some cases for some of the things you're trying to understand. So you can go to AI and, you know, type in, hey, you know, this is what we're doing, can you explain this? And, th and then the AI might tell you, you know, an alternate explanation, or it'll give you an explanation that might be better than what you got in class. So try to look into AI as another resource. You know, AI basically scans the internet, I guess, and, you know, it has access to the internet, and it just gives you, you know, a better answer than a simple Google search. You know, when you, when you search on Google, a lot of times you'll just get a couple results, but Google also now has, like, a, a generative AI search. You can do that as well, and that seems to work pretty well uh, sometimes. I still find that regular AI, like ChatGPT, seems to work better uh, for general questions uh, than just a regular Google search, so far at least. Anyways, those are some suggestions. So use AI, um, write everything down in class, and then after class, go over everything uh, that you did in class and just immediately uh, try to go over it again. And if possible, try to make friends in class or try to join study groups. You're in a tough situation because it's your fourth year and you're doing a hard major. You know, I think anyone who's doing any type of science math major and they're in their fourth year, it's gonna be really, really hard to keep up. It's gonna be really hard to hang on. And honestly, most of the time, like you said, it's, it's just really hard to understand everything. It's, it's tough, it's tough. If anyone else has advice for Jesse, please leave a comment in the comment section below. When you leave comments, it helps other people. Also, if you found any value in this content and you feel like you want to subscribe, feel free to hit the subscribe button if you want to, or if not, that's okay too. Also, I do have math courses on my website, mathsorcerer.com. They're actually on the Udemy platform, but if you decide to buy them, please use the links from my website as it helps me greatly. Also, I've lowered the price to be as low as possible, so I think you'll get a good price if you use my links. Oh, and I do have another channel. It's a fitness channel. It's called The Fitness Sorcerer. You can just search for it on YouTube, The Fitness Sorcerer, and I post all kinds of random stuff there, mostly fitness content. Hopefully this reply has been helpful to someone out there. When you're in your fourth year and you're studying something hard, it's hard. But again, take those notes, go over them immediately after class, you know, as soon as you can. This is something I did, especially in grad school, and I think it helped me tremendously because I did not want to be lost, especially in grad school. So worship those notes, go over them again, and then you can also email your professor too. And yeah, hopefully it's been helpful. Good luck, keep doing mathematics.